All right, for more, we're joined now live by Robert DeGroote from the U.S. Geological Survey's Earthquake Science Center in Pasadena and also the coordinator for the Shake Alert Earthquake Early Warning System. Thank you so much for coming on today, Robert. We appreciate the time. So some people here in the Bay Area, they did get a Shake Alert on their phones before the quake was felt, but many others did not. Do you, do you have a sense here this afternoon about just how effective the Shake Alert system was at reaching people here in the Bay Area this morning? Yes, uh, the Shake Alert system performed exactly as designed, and what likely happened for people in Berkeley and regions that were, you know, fairly close, like Oakland and even parts of San Francisco, people probably received, if they received an alert, received it after uh, the earthquake was over because of their 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 proximity to the to the epicenter. But if you're farther out, say if you were out maybe out towards Antioch or uh, in uh, south in Fremont or out in parts of San Francisco, you may have gotten a, a second or two before uh, the uh, the heavy shaking from the earthquake arrived. And I think what's really important is that we always message this to make sure that you, you take that protective action if you get an alert or if you feel shaking. The shake alert system uh, is very quick, but it's not so quick that it can always beat the, the earthquake waves. So the idea is to to do one or the other uh, if you feel shaking or if you get the alert to take that protective action. Now, what about these aftershocks? Now, there were two that came later, 2.3 and 2.6. How long should we expect some of those aftershocks to take place? They can, they can go on for a while, the aftershocks. There's about a 14% chance of uh, magnitude 3 uh, aftershock over the next week. So it's it's going down fairly quickly. Uh, this was, now one thing of course, is that we, we know that, that feeling shaking is unsettling. And I was listening to some of the folks in Berkeley feel, you know, what they felt during the earthquake. And we know that that, that feeling shaking is unsettling. But this, this earthquake is something that we experience all the time in California. We have on the order of 50 earthquakes a day. It's a great reminder that we're in earthquake country. Yes, there will be aftershocks likely from this event, but again, there will be other earthquakes that will happen in the course of just living in earthquake country, country like California. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, no, I, I live in Berkeley, and it was it was it was quite the jolt this morning. Quite a way to start off the start off the work week. Um, let, let's talk about the Hayward Fault, where this earthquake was centered, because we we know this is a fault we talk about a lot here in the Bay Area. We have a lot of concerns about the, the likelihood of a large quake at some point in the future here along the Hayward Fault, and obviously it runs over uh, underneath a heavily populated part of the Bay Area here. W what have we seen as of late in terms of activity uh, along the Hayward Fault? And, and how should we understand what we're seeing? Well, I think one thing to understand is that that someday it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when there will be a large event on the on the Hayward Fault. I think these earthquakes that we've had today and in others in the past serve as a reminder to to be ready for that for that earthquake that could happen either on the Hayward Fault or on the San Andreas or on a, on a fault in somewhere else regionally that could impact the region. Uh, it's really important to be ready with your emergency supplies kit. Uh, one thing that everybody could use, which was mentioned earlier, is having uh, your phone prepared to use the Shake Alert Earthquake Early Warning System. That's part of your kit. So you can learn more at shakealert.org. Make sure you can get those alerts on your phone um, of course, there are different ways of getting them, but the important thing is, is that you have that as part of your toolkit. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Robert DeGroote from the USGS. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Robert.